the substantive testing of testing all the transactions and testing uh, the account balances. So we're hoping to do test of controls so that we can determine that we can rely on them to some degree, reducing the amount of detection, uh, the amount of substantive testing we'll need to do. And then we'll set and document the control risk for the purchasing process. So that's going to be our ultimate goal for the control risk. We'll set the control risk. And those are the two factors that are kind of controlled by the, by the company. Inherent risk by the business that they've chosen to be in, the process that they have set up for it, and control risk, meaning the controls that they have put in place in order to safeguard against the inherent risks. Purchasing process control risk information system. Auditor will obtain the information below for each major class of transaction in the purchasing process. So we're going to go through this process. We're going to obtain this information related to it. The initiation process for the purchase, cash disbursements, and uh, purchase return transactions. So we want to know about then the initiation process, the cash disbursements, and uh, the purchase return transactions the accounting records, supporting documents, and accounts that are part of the purchase process, cash disbursement, and purchase returns. We want to get information related to that. The flow of each type of transaction from initiation to inclusion in the financial statement. So how does this flow through with regards to, one, the initiation all the way to the financial statements? Computer processing data should be included uh, in this process. So note that, of course, the IT will be involved in this, and we may need IT uh, professionals to help us look into the system to make sure that we can understand and be able to audit uh, the system give us the rights to basically go through and test the audit within uh, within the system and test different types of controls within it the process used to estimate accrued liability purchasing process control risk assessment after testing controls the auditor will set the achieved level of control risk so we're going to obviously test the controls then we're going to set the control risk uh, if tests of control support the plan level of control risk, no modifications are necessary to planned detection risk. So if we, if we don't have to make any modifications to the detection risk and we can move forward with everything as we planned, the auditor will process with the substantive procedures as planned. Meaning we're going to say, okay, we, we're, we're at the level of control that in the control risk that we had uh, determined it to be. Therefore, we can move forward with the substantive tests as planned uh, when tests do not support planned control risk so what happens if we test the controls and they are below what we expect them to be the auditor uh, lowers the level of planned detection risk so remember what, what we're talking about here with these it's kind of easy to see what what we're doing relationship wise but it can be difficult to know which direction these things are going if we were to be tested on it or to or just to, to you know talk about these type of factors so Obviously, what we're doing is trying to rely on the controls. If we can rely on the controls, if they're good controls, then we're going to do less substantive testing. That's fairly obvious. But what does it mean to have the control? Or hopefully by now we've talked about it by a lot. So but what if the control, what does it mean for the control risk factors? Well, control risk is the risk that the, the problems will not be detected by the internal controls that are set up. So therefore, if we're not relying on, if we cannot rely on the internal controls, the risks that the controls are weak are going to be higher. That means that we're going to increase the control risk because the, the controls are weak, but they're not good. Therefore, we increase the risk factor. The control risk is going to be higher because the controls are not going to detect. And the detection risk, then, we are also going to, we're going to set at lower because what we're trying to do is say the detection risk is going to be the risk that the audit test the substantive test the tests we're going to put in place are are going to not catch the error so and that means we want to make that then we want to do more substantive testing which will lower the risk that uh, our detection risk wouldn't detect the error so we can't rely on the controls control risk goes up we're going to increase control risk and therefore we may we need to make detection risk to go down to make the overall thing basically balance out. So we're going to decrease the detection risk by doing more substantive testing.